Given an array of integers, please design an algorithm to check whether this array contains any duplicates. And what if the max distance between the two indices for the two duplicates in this array is at a max allowed to be at k? Are you able to extend your algorithm to do that? That's about today's video. Let's get into that. Hi everyone, this is Steve here. Today we're going through another very classic um, interview question. 217 on LeetCode contains duplicate. It's actually a series of three problems. So we'll go through them one by one, from one to two to three, easy to easy to medium. That's the difficulty level. Let's take a look at uh, the first one first. Contains duplicate. So we're given an array of integers to find if the array contains any duplicates. Very easy problem. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1. So it does contain duplicates. So 1 appears twice. So it's returning true here. 1, 2, 3, 4 is the second example. It doesn't contain any duplicates. So the output is false. This one is true because we see 1 appears multiple times, 3 appears multiple times, 4 appears multiple times, and 2 appears multiple times. So every single element is, none of the elements is distinct. So it's returning true. This problem is super straightforward. Um, if you know any basics of data structures and the hash set or hash table coming to your, your mind, we'll just uh, we'll use a build a hash set, loop through this in the entire integer array only once. Um, we'll just keep adding the elements that we're currently iterating on into the hash set. At any point, if we cannot add the current element into the hash set, we'll just return false. And or in the end, we have reached the end of the integer array, we can add all of the elements into the hash set. That means none of the elements in the integer array is a duplicate. We can just return false at that moment. That's it. That's about the algorithm. Um, there is nothing really fancy. Time, okay, let's go through that first. Uh, put that into code first. Integer set hash set for int num. Uh, so if at any point we cannot add this number into the hash set, we can just return false. So check whether it contains duplicate. Oh, it, it should return true here because uh, the problem, um, the API is called contains duplicate. If it contains duplicate, we're just going to return true here. So after this, well, um, after this for loop, if we didn't break out, we didn't return true, we're just going to return false here. That means none of the elements is a duplicate in this array. That's it. Okay, now let's hit submit and see. All right, accepted. And that's the uh, algorithm for, that's the solution to solve this problem. Very straightforward. Time complexity is just uh, on. We need to go through this entire integer array. Anyway, we'll have to go through it at least once. Otherwise, we have no clue which element is a duplicate. Space complexity is the, could be O and all we call it OK. K is the number of distinct elements in this array, right? That's it. Um, nothing too much to talk about. A very straightforward problem. Okay, all right. With that problem contains duplicate one soft. Now let's take a look at its follow-up. Uh, Lead code 219 contains duplicate two. Let's take a look at this one. We're still given an array of integers, but now this time we're given an additional integer k, additional integer k here. Um, it's asking us to find out whether there are two distinct indices i and j in the array such that nums i equals to nums j, so still duplicates, and the absolute difference between i and j is at most k. That's the follow-up. That's the slight variation, which changes the problem a little bit, but still uh, pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the example. One, two, three, one. This is the given array, and the k is three. Output is true because of what? We see the duplicate number is one, and the max distance between these two indices, this is zero, one, two, three. The max distance between these two indices, zero and three, is at three. So it's still within the boundary of k. That's why it's returning true. Let's take a look at the second example. 1, 0, 1, 1. Max distance is 1. So we see the duplicate number is 1. And the duplicate number, the two indices, this one is beyond the reach. But this one, 
0, 1, 2, 3. These one, the two indices are 2 and 3. So 3 minus 2 or 2 minus 3, the absolute difference between these two duplicate numbers is still within the k boundary, right? That's why this one is still true. And let's take the take a look at the last example, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is the given integer array. And the k is 2. And the output is false. Why? Because apparently we see there are duplicate numbers. 1, 2, 3. All of the three numbers are duplicates. But it's returning false. Why? Because any of the two any of the two duplicate indices are, be are beyond the boundary of k, right? For one, the the first um, index of the duplicate number one is at zero, one, two, three. The second duplicate number of value one is at index three, right? So three minus zero is three. Three is bigger than two, is greater than two. That's why the output is false. So the two indices, the absolute difference between the two indices, two indices for any of the three numbers in the third example is greater than k which is 2. That's why it's returning false. That's this follow-up. All right, now let's see, think about how we can use the solution that we come up to solve the first problem to contain duplicate 1 to even apply that solution to this one. Is that even possible? For that solution, we use the hash set. Let's think about it. We just use this um, example 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, this given array, and k equals to 2. Let's go through that. One, two, three. 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, and k equals to 2, k equals to 2, okay. Let's put the index on top of this array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are a total of 6 elements in this um, array, and the indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I put them on top of this array. Um, instead of using a hash set of size of n, which is 6, what we can do is that we can trim the size of the hash set to be of the size of k. That's the, the only modification to the previous solution. Then we can apply that solution, the slightly modified version of the solution to problem one, apply that to this follow-up problem. Why? How can we do that? Let's see. So first, we build a hash set of size 2. The hash set size is always going to be k, which in this case is 2. So first, we have these two elements. We start from the very left. We add one here and two here. So we reach the size of two. Then we'll continue to add. But we'll check after adding the third element. The third element is a three. After adding three, we check, oh, okay. So three is, so for these two indices, the most left and the most right, these two, um, the, di the diff, the difference between the two, these two indices, is the max, which is 2 minus 0 is 2, is still within the boundary of k. So we'll check here. So 3, so is so 1, 2, 3, there are no any duplicates within this hash set of size of of size of k plus 1. And the difference between the the two, any of the two numbers is still within the boundary k. So none. So there's no duplicates for this current hash set. Plus after this check, we find that the size of the current hash set is already greater than k, which means we have to remove the remove one element from the current hash set, but remove which one? We want to remove the oldest one, the one that we added the earliest into the current hash set, right? Because this is the one that's going to be the lowest, the smallest index, which is going to be expired. It cannot be used anymore after we iterate through towards the right, right? So we'll remove this one. So now the current hash set is this. So this hash set is still valid because the size of this one is still within the boundary of k, right? So now we come here. We'll come here, we'll add one more. We'll add this one. This is the one that we are currently iterating on. This is the number we're currently iterating on. We'll add this one into the current hash set. Oh, okay, there is still no duplicates in this current hash set. But we'll check again. We found the size of the current hash set is still greater than k. Okay, we'll again remove the oldest one, which is this two. Okay, kick that one out. Remove that. 
this is the current hash set before we start the next iteration. Okay, we'll add two here. So this is the current hash set, three, one, two, because the index is four minus two is still two. Two is we need the boundary of K. Okay, still there is no any duplicates in this hash set. Okay, we'll kick off, we'll kick out the oldest one, which in this case is three. Okay, so now the hash set is one and two. We'll continue. We add this three into the hash set, one, two, three. Okay, three can still be added into this hash set. So no duplicates in the hash set. And we find that the size of the current hash set is already greater than K. Okay, kick off the, the oldest one. Now hash set is this. We try to add one more, but we found that we reached the end of the current, the given integer array. All right, we didn't break out. We didn't return true at any moment, which means there is no possible duplicates, that the two duplicates indices are within the distance of k, right? That's why this case we returned false here. We return false here, right? Okay, now let's take a look at a happy case, which is one, two, three, k equals to three. Let's look at this happy case, which is this one, two, three, and k equals to one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. Yeah, one, two, three, one, and k equals to k equals to three. One, two, three, one, and k equals to three. Yeah, output is true. Why is true? We apply the same algorithm here. So here we have a hash. We're going to use a hash set of size k instead of size n. So hash set of size k, uh, which is set of size three. In this case, one, two, three. First, we have we added one, two, three into the hash set. We can add all the three elements into this hash set. Right? Why? Because none of them is a duplicate. So we didn't break out. Now, move on. We add one more one into the hash set. Oh, wow. We found that we cannot add this one into the hash set. Why? Because one is still here. We haven't moved that one yet. Okay. Then we'll just return true, which is a happy case. Okay. This array does meet the condition for this problem, which means we this array does contain duplicates and the indices for the two duplicates in this array is within the boundary of k so three minus zero is three three is equal to three less than or equal to three right so that's why we have returning we have returned true for this case that's the algorithm so we basically tweak a little bit for the solution to the first problem contains duplicate one Instead of using the size of n for the hash set, we'll just keep moving. It's like a sliding window. We have a hash set of size k, and we keep kicking out the oldest elements while we are adding new elements. So the size of the hash set is always k. It's moving towards the right. That's the algorithm. Slight, um, very slight modification to the first solution. Now let's put that into actual code. Let's see. We initialize a hash set exactly the same as the first solution to the first problem, hash set, and then we'll uh, use a for loop to go through this hash set. Let's put it here. Now, exactly the same here, we'll check if we can add this number into the hash set. If we cannot add it at any moment, for example, here. Right, and this moment we are encountering one here. We find that we cannot add one into the hash set, right? Because we have already one here in the hash set already. At that moment, we'll just return true. Otherwise, otherwise, what do we have to do? For example, here we have a hash set hash set size of two. We are in we are iterating on the three here. So we encounter here, we encounter three. Okay, three is not a duplicate. We added the three into the hash set. Now we check the size of the hash set, right? We find that it's greater than K. So we'll remove the oldest one, which in this case is this one. Okay, now let's put that into code. We'll check if the size of the hash set is greater than K or not. If that is the case, we're just going to remove the oldest element. How do we denote the oldest element? What's the index of the oldest element? Right now, k is here. k is 2. k is 2 here. Oh, no, no, i is 2, sorry. i, we're iterating on this on this element. 
this element's index is two. So well, and the one that we need to remove is here at index zero. So apparently it's i minus k, right? Two minus two is zero, which is the oldest element that we have to remove out of the hash set. That's it, very straightforward. So we're gonna remove i minus k, that's it. Every time after we add this current one, that the number and the admin that we are iterating on into the hash set, if we can add that, we'll check whether the size of the hash set exceeds k. If that's the case, we'll remove the oldest one, kick it out of the hash set, right? So after these two checks, if none of them, if this one didn't break out at any moment, that means we just return false, right? We just return false which is this case, which is this case. We have reached the end of this array, but we still didn't break out, we didn't return true. In that moment, we just return false, right? We have finished iterating through this entire given array and we didn't find any duplicates. For any of the two indices of the possible two duplicates, the max difference between the two indices is within the boundary K, that's it. Now let's talk about the um, time complexity and space complexity. Time complexity is going to be O n. The n is the size of the array. There are n elements in this array, so the time complexity is going to be O n because we have to iterate through every single element, right? And we'll do what are we going to do? We're going to do add. We're going to do remove. All of these operations are constant. So we have to do all of these O1 operations for n elements. So it's O n time complexity. Now let's talk about space complexity. What is the space complexity? The space complexity for this solution is going to be the minimum of k or n, right? The max is just going to be just in case if k is say the length of this array is four, but k is ten, but still the minimum is four. Right, so that is the minimum of n or k. Usually k is, if it makes sense, but it also makes sense k is greater than the total length of the array. That's why we say the space complexity is going to be the minimum of n or k, right? So say in this case, the space complexity is going to be three instead of four because we keep the hash set size to be k, which is smaller than the total length of the array. So the space complexity is the minimum of n or k. That's the time and space complexity of this solution. I hope it all makes sense. All right, that's it for contains duplicate one and two. If you feel you learned something from this video or this video helps you understand these problems better, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tap the little bell notification so that each time when I publish a new video, you can get it immediately. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.